so I promised you guys some more design videos and we are still in the load calculation area so here's how this works when you are designing your frames you want to start with the roof and work your way down now this is not a complete model but it gives you a pretty good idea of what we have to do I've kind of left all this open so it would make it a little easier to see. But the first thing we want to figure out is we want to figure out our roof load. Alright, now these rafters here, they end up being 10, uh, 10 feet 3 inches long by the time you go from up here down to the tail. Now, really, I could get away with this load calculation by going from the point right there where it's supported up to the top but I like to go the full span because I would rather have it just a little bit beefier than what I need than to be uh, undersized at all so I kind of like to to go that way so what we need to figure out we want to figure out our tributary area now our tributary area is going to be halfway in between two rafters. These are two foot centers, so this is going to end up being two feet and that we're going to have to support. So we're going from mid-span in between these two spaces. Ooh. That's also, we're going to be worrying about the weight from the top plate to the point of the rafter. As there will be a ridge board in here um, depending on, I'm not sure how Nathan's doing his roof. I don't think he's quite positive yet, but uh, this will give an idea how to figure it, and it should get us pretty darn close. So, anyway, so 20 feet 6 inches is the area, the square footage of that area we have right here. So, we need to figure out how many pounds is actually going to sit uniformly loaded on that area. Now, we'll get into the, the roof things a little bit more as we go, uh, more design and some of the considerations, but right now we're just trying to sit here and figure out load calculations. This way he knows that his frame is beefy enough to do what we need to do. So 20 feet, 6 inches. And there we have it. So 20.5 feet, and we need to figure out that load. Now, I need my handy-dandy pen. Should have had all this prepared. So, we're going. Now, Nathan's uh, snow load down there is 25 pounds per square foot. So, 25 PSF. And I'm going to add another, I'm going to add another, say, uh, so our live load's 25 pounds. I'll say our dead load material weight. I'm not sure what he's putting on for roof. If it's shingle or metal, it does make a difference. But we'll say 16 pounds per square foot. So 25, the 16 times 20.5 equals 840.5 pounds. So what we need to do now, now that we have that figured out, we need to get into the forest reform, okay, because this is where you have a really good, and we'll start you, I'll show you guys how to, this is where we have a really good toolbox here, and these numbers check out, these numbers are excellent. So, when you go, let me go back again. Bear with me, guys. Okay, let's go back. All right. We'll start you guys right from the beginning here. So you're going to go to the forestry forum. Okay. And that is forestryforum.com. You guys see the top of the screen? <clears throat> now, I'm already signed in and all that good stuff. So you're going to go down the side, the left-hand side of the screen. You're going to see your uh, all your advertisements, things like that. 
you get to the bottom of the screen, you can see this red toolbox right here. <clears throat> it's right below the gallery and a button where you can donate. So you open that up. All right. So now we are into the forestry forum toolbox. So one of the members a long time ago, member Don P, put excellent, took the time to put in the engineering calculators in here. And there are some excellent stuff. We can figure out our beams, our columns, roof calculators, just all kinds of stuff. Even even log wall height shrinkage calculator. I mean, there's, there's some excellent stuff in here. The one we're going to be most concerned with throughout the process of trying to design this, we're going to be looking for the beam and column calculators. So right now, we are looking for a uniformly loaded simple beam. Now, and I like to use the drop-down species list because it's just everything's tailor-made ready for whatever species you're going to be you're going to be using. So, for the most part for what we're doing for this frame, I'm going to go with the dimensional lumber because it should be a 4x6 is what we're going to try first to see if it works. If that doesn't work, we will go to the simple beam heavy timber with the drop down species, but let's try this first. All right, so first thing I do, we know our weight that we have to support in this area is going to be 840 pounds. Now that's not to say this thing's always going to have 840 pounds on it. This is uh, just a uh, just an idea here. So our 10 feet 3 inches. I'm terrible, I should be able to do this math right in my head. So, oh yeah, 120 inches plus 323 inches. Width of the beam. Gonna go four. Oop, back here. Depth of the beam. Angle six. We're looking for number two, eastern hemlock. Let's we'll see if that's going to pass. And right here is where you are looking. And this is your bending, your deflection, and your horizontal shear. And when you look down here in the bottom, that passes. Passes, passes. So over, over the span of that rafter, our deflection is going to be about a quarter of an inch. That's pretty good. I like to see things under half an inch. We pass in the shear. We pass in deflection. And we pass in the bending. So... So we know right now that our 4x6 rafters made out of eastern hemlock will pass. We want number two eastern white pine. I'm going to show the result. And that passes. And the same deflection as the hemlock, which is very interesting. Very interesting. And the shear PSI is actually pretty similar. That's pretty good. That's really good. So, Nathan, if you're watching this, and I know you're going to end up watching it, um, if you're able to, you can do an eastern white pine for that. Now, to give you an idea of the difference, your rafter weight green is going to be 86 pounds. And that is... And that is um, if you're running the hemlock. If you're running the white pine, your uh, weight green is going to be 61 and a half pounds, just to give you an idea of the difference between the pine and the hemlock weight. So I know I'm kind of jumping around, guys. You'll have to bear with me. So we know our rafters are going to pass. So a four by six rafters, good. Now, 
Let's see what else we have. We'll do a disclaimer here. This is not meant to be any kind of an engineering course on doing this. This is just very simple, straightforward timber frame design. If you're doing a crook frame or you're doing a bunch of arches, all kinds of stuff like that, what I'm showing you here, there's a lot of different things and it's a lot of information that I do not yet know that we're going to try to learn, but I'm not an engineer, guys. So this is just this is just working man, common sense, find the calculators, find the information you use, you need, and try to go from there with it. I'm going to back out of this one. And we're going to go to beam and column calculators once again. But now we are going to simple beam, uniformly loaded, heavy timber, 5x5 five five and larger drop down species list. Okay. So, so far, we know our rafters are going to pass. We know our top plates are going to pass. Now, I set this up as an open span here, both above and below. So that's something that's kind of important. Kind of important to know. Okay. So, oh, where do we want to go now? Bear with me here. So we're going to figure out what kind of weight this tie beam right here can handle. Again, our tributary area is 16 feet long. So we want to go halfway in between this bay and halfway into that bay. So 8 feet, we're going to figure. So we'll go 8 feet. Now this will be shorter than 16 feet right here. Or, uh, Excuse me, this will be shorter than 13 feet 6 inches, but I'm going to figure it for the 13 feet 6 inches all the way across. I just like that little extra edge of safety. So 8. So we have 104 square feet. Let's see, 104 square foot tributary area. Oop, damn it. Okay. So 104 square, yeah, 104 square foot tributary area. And we are going to figure this for 60 pounds, a 60 pound total load, 60 pounds per square foot. Now let's go back to forestry forum. Get rid of all this. We know this is going to be hemlock. We're in the same calculators we used on the uh, top plate. And go eastern hemlock, number two, beam and stringer. We're going to start with an 8 by 10 and see if that works. So I think that's what he figured. So 13 times 13, 6 times 12. So we're looking at 162 inches. Now I'm going to figure this for a little bit more here. I'm going to figure our dead load is going to be 20 pounds per square foot because hemlock is heavy. I'm going to figure our total load 
going to be 60 pounds per square foot. Now he's only using this. No, yeah. Oh, I messed up here. I messed up on that last one. Dead load on the beam. So 20. There we go. So this is going to be 2,080 pounds. And we're going to go 60 times 104, 6,240 pounds. So I messed up on that top plate one. We'll have to revisit that. Let's show the result. Okay. We have our first failure at that load. We pass on deflection. We pass on shear, but we fail in the bending. So we don't want that. And our shear passes just fine. We're all right with the shear, but we want something that passes in all three categories. Now, something I've been talking about, I want to run these numbers in pine just for my own information. So I want to see how much stronger hemlock is than pine, and so far the numbers have been pretty darn similar here. They're just about exactly the same. 0.38 inches deflection, all that good stuff. That is very interesting. Very, very interesting. And just back to hemlock. So we're going to change this to an 8 by 12. So we know an 8 by 10 doesn't work. Let's say an 8 by 11. Let's see. Let's see what that gives us. Still fails. See that? Still fails in the bending. Our deflection, though, just that extra inch of meat right there dropped from 0.38 to 0.29. We'll say we'll round it up. Our shear is still fine. That's all well and good. So let's try it with 12 inch. All right, there we go. So now it finally passes. We got a pass in bending, pass in deflection, 0.22 inches for deflection. Our shear, those numbers look a lot better, but all three pass. So we know now, go back to sketch up. We now know that these tie beams right here, at least this middle one, needs to be an 8 by 12 to pass. Now, reason I put that floor load up there, this is going to be a storage area for Nathan. And we all know that tools, things like that, they, they weigh quite a bit. When you have storage areas like this, usually people tend to fill them right up. So I want to make sure that he has enough strength in here to where that floor is going to support pretty much anything he wants to put up there. Now, my barn, I designed that floor for a total of 80 pounds per square foot. So that's very important. Now, we do need to go back through and figure out these... I need to refigure the top plate because I had a moment there. I messed up. I'll go back. An 8 by 8. Hmm. 
Well, let's go all this. Okay. So our span's 84 inches. Dead load on the beam. So that's going to be 1,280 pounds. Our total. Two thousand four hundred and eighty pounds. Okay, guys. This here I changed. Now let me explain something. And I know we've mentioned it before, but this is very important. So in this span right here, in the span of eighty-four inches, the total weight that thing has to support is gonna be now this is higher because I do make I make my roof tributary area quite a bit bigger than it needs to be, but I would rather be safe. And these calculators give you pretty conservative numbers to begin with, meaning they make everything a little bit bigger than what they need to be, which is what you want. I mean, really, if you're going to design these, hire an engineer that's familiar with timber framing, unless you're like me and you're just stubborn and cheap, so you do it however you do it. So what we're looking at right now, this dead load in this area it needs to support, that's material weight load, just so you know. Total load is your live load, which would be your snow, plus your uh, dead load. So your live load is the load that changes, your dead load is the load that stays the same. And I'm also going to tell you that I'm figuring all these weights with green timbers. So as this frame dries out, and your materials get lighter, it's actually going to be a stronger structure because you're not going to have to support nearly as much as you did when it was green. But you need to design it if you're using green timber simply because it's going to be quite a few years before that thing's dried out and really starts to lighten up. So anyway, enough of that. Let's see. Okay, good. We're still safe. So our... Uh, that top plate's okay. We are still safe. Everything passes. Everything passes. So let's go see where we are at. Now I know this is, I hope this isn't too confusing, guys. Hope I'm explaining this well enough. All right, so we are at, we know our rafter's going to work. We know an 8x8 top plate's going to work, and we also know it would work whether he was using hemlock or eastern white pine, which is really good to know. Next thing I want to know, are these floor joists going to work? So our floor joists, same thing, they're two foot on center, same thing as the roof. We have an 84 inch span here. So we're going to see if that works. All right, are we ready? Let's go back. We're going to reset this. Our total load that that has to support is going to be 840 pounds. Our dead load... going to be 280 pounds. Remember I set that at 20 pounds per square foot. Span of the beam is 84 inches. Width is 8. Or no, our width is 4. Depth is 6. We are going to go with... Number two, Eastern Hemlock. Da, 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 da. Let's show result. I tell you what, we pass with flying colors. Look at that. Look at that deflection. 0 0.06 inches. 
0 0.07 if you round it up. Those are good numbers. I like that. Yeah, look pretty good there. We'll go back. So, where we are at, and I'm going to leave it here for tonight because I am getting tired. And this video is getting long. You can tell by my computer it's 11.04 here and I still have to edit. So let's see where we are at. So right now, we know our rafter is going to work at 4 by 6 Our 8 by 8 top plate is going to work. We need an 8 by 12 top, or tie beam to support the floor weight. We know that a 4x6 floor joist is going to work. So we're in good shape. Next time we meet, what we're going to want to do is... Next time we meet, we could do a materials list for Nathan. Plus, I'll show you how to figure out, make sure our wall posts are going to be strong enough to support the weight that's going to be bearing down on it. And... That's where we're at. So anyway, oop. anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And I know this is kind of a disorganized chaos thing. You guys know that's what I'm good for. But uh, if you have any questions, I can answer in the con or leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them in the next video. Um, I'm not a pro at this, guys. This is just stuff I've been picking up as I go. Now, uh, there's a lot of good threads on the forestry forum covering this very subject. I try to simplify everything, and I hope I didn't explain it too fast. But if it's not what you guys are looking for, we can do a better, try to do a better job in the next video. So let me know what you guys think. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. It's really good to see you. I know the videos are slow right now. My wife's holding down the fort. And I know they're a little slow for me. To me, doing videos like this, I think it's important because it shows you guys another aspect that's very important for the planning.